Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of My LinkedIn Friends, and today I am joined by my friend, Kerry Barrett of Kerry Barrett Consulting. And uh, today we're just going to be talking a bit about what, what Kerry does, her awesome background in history, because uh, she's got a really cool story, and what she's up to now, and her products and her services and everything she's doing. So Kerry, welcome to the show. Thanks for coming Thank on. you for having me. This is so exciting. Yeah. It's our first no, I, official show together. It, it is our first official show together. I mean, we've <laughs> talked in virtual and, and yes. so many different other things, but you know, actually yeah. kind of doing this. This is this is new. Very cool. <laughs> so you have um a pretty extensive background in uh in media and being on camera and mm -hmm. behind the camera and all that. So I guess give everybody the uh the Carrie Barrett background. Okay, yeah, I'll give you the quick and dirty Carrie Barrett background. That doesn't yeah. sound entirely right, but <laughs> you know what I'm getting at. So yeah. I, I, spent, I spent 20 years in the news business as an anchor, as a reporter, um, as a producer a little bit, especially early on all over the country. Um, I, was, I covered stories over in Iraq during the Gulf War and obviously elections and, and international events and natural disasters, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I did that for 20 years. Most recently, I was at WNBC in New York. Um, I won an Emmy there for my breaking news coverage of the Tribeca crane collapse that happened back in 2015. But about a year-ish ago, uh, my contract was up and it was time to make a change. I was getting up mm -hmm. at 1.30 in the morning and I had three young kids and it was just no longer a great fit for my life. And so in the process of figuring out what was going to be the next great fit for my life, I was doing some networking uh, in person back when you could actually see people face to face and reach out and touch them. Um, and one of the women I spoke with works at a law firm in the city. And she said, you're crazy to think about going back into the corporate world. You have this skill set that you've curated over 20 years on camera, which people need not only with navigating the, the media, if people want to be a contributor or an expert on a network somewhere, but also just in general with mm -hmm. the need for video content. She said, you need to go in and, and make that happen for people. And then, you know, once you fix their problem, you can swoop out and they can call you back in when you need them again. And you don't have to answer to a boss and you don't have to go to corporate. And I'm like, that's what I'm going to do. So I went home and told my husband that I was going to start a business. And he was like, what? <laughs> um, I'm sorry, say that again. I have trouble balancing a checkbook, which is true. I don't balance them. Nonetheless, here I am a year later, and I am still figuring it out. But the business is working. And I will say in you know this craziness that we're in right now, people who may not have recognized prior the importance of video content and presentation mm -hmm. now understand that there is something to be learned by most people in terms of making sure that your message gets across and that, you know, I'm not showing you this part of my house when I'm having my phone call with you, nor do you get <laughs> to look up my nose. <laughs> so that is what I'm doing a lot of right now and online courses as well. That stuff has, has really exploded in the last couple of months. Yeah, that's excellent. And I, I think it's it's really cool to have, you know, what you were doing and, and having all that experience being on camera and having to deal with those situations and presenting and being live, but then being able to translate that into, you know, an everyday business where people are in those situations, whether it's it's public speaking just in front of a crowd, not necessarily being on video, but with the advent of video really exploding and you know now that we're living in much more of a virtual world like this in communication you know it's important well video never goes away that's the other thing that right. scares people about it. it doesn't matter i mean trust me if you did a you know a quick youtube search for carrie barrett bloopers please don't do it i promise you'll find some i'm totally pieces. doing it <laughs> hashtag carrie well, barrett bloopers. SEO, go for it actually no um you know i there's there's we've and, you know, six hours of live TV for 20 years a day, you you make some mistakes. And one of the big things I train people on is getting comfortable with that feeling of discomfort. Mm -hmm. And that does involve making mistakes. And if you are live, you're on a call or you're doing something like this, you, you got to keep the show moving forward. And, right. and that's what it's all about. <laughs> one of the things that I like to say is you got to get comfortable with your own sense of self-loathing. And that's really what I have done and was forced <laughs> to do during my time in the news business. Here's the thing. I used to hate 
public speaking. If you talk to anybody who I went to school with, high school, they would tell you I I would have been the last person that anybody would have expected to create a career on air in, in <laughs> front of people where the mistakes live on in perpetuity forever. Um, that was not me. I was the person who was in the back of the room hyperventilating, possibly in a puddle of my own vomit, and <laughs> certainly in the fetal position. But, but through the so so I decided to go into a career on camera in front of potentially millions of people. But what I learned through that process is really part of my process that I use to teach people. It is getting comfortable with feeling uncomfortable. It's realizing that people don't expect you to be perfect, but it is knowing what makes you real and authentic and what your message is. And then there are some best practices that apply to delivering that message so that it resonates with your audience and you get them to do what you want them to do, which is, you know, at the end of the day, the name of the game. That's it. One of my things is don't use too many cliches like that. <laughs> I just <laughs> use two in a row. <laughs> you know, what are some of like maybe just your top very high level, like best practices um, for folks that you could just give them a little a little nugget right now? Right. So you're you're absolutely the camera is the cruel mistress and the tech <laughs> that is involved with some of these platforms is even crueler. We've all seen the lag and some, it's hard to. It's it hard is. to compensate for that, and it can be hard to mitigate for that, uh, mitigate that as well. But there are some simple things that you can do when you are in, you know, when you're on something like this, for example. Right. And one of the the questions that I was getting very frequently had to do with where the heck do I look when I'm on a camera? Because I know it's like you want to look at yourself and see all right. of the terrible things that are going on and how you can <laughs> hopefully fix them. Don't do that because it is the equivalent of if you're having a right look into the look into the lens when you are speaking. Right. So right now right. I'm always going to be looking into the lens. If I'm not looking into the lens, if I'm looking anywhere else, it's like having a conversation like this. I would never do this. Nobody would. Nobody who was aware anyway would ever do this if they were having a conversation with somebody sitting here. And that's what the equivalent of not look if it eventually gets distracting when you're in this right. very narrow field of vision, everything becomes hyper focused and things that wouldn't necessarily even feel uncomfortable or out of place when you're sitting around a conference room of 10 suddenly becomes very ob obvious and very uncomfortable when you're just looking at this little monitor. So looking at the camera lens when you are speaking and what people then say is, but then I can't read what the person is saying. I can't read their facial expressions. And my response to that is, you look at them when they're talking and then you can see what where there's incongruence or if their facial expression and their body language is matching what they're saying. And for example, on something like this, where I know that there are other people watching besides you and I, occasionally I look back up the camera, I re-engage the audience and that's right. how you continue. In terms of um, the other big things that I see are lighting and you know this from, you know, from the production standpoint, don't sit in front of a bright window uh, or sit with your back to a bright window or your back to a bright lamp because as i like to say you're one digitized voice away from the witness protection program if i can see <laughs> nothing that's going on in your face you might as well be on a phone call the only purpose of doing video calls is to facilitate a connection with people that you're not going to see face to face for who knows how long and if they can't see your face again hang it up get on the phone and do a phone call because you're not doing yourself any favors if people can't see your eyes. Well, thank you so much for, for coming on and spending some time with uh -huh. us today. Uh, this was thank excellent. Thank you for having me. Yes. Yeah, definitely learned some some very helpful tips uh, <laughs> and it was great hearing all about your background. I'm sure there's lots of great war stories. I'm sure we can. We oh can boy, yeah, like I said, check out YouTube or don't. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag Carrie Barrett. Yeah bloopers. <laughs> um, what's the best way for people to reach out to you? Yeah, uh, there's a couple of different ways you can, yeah. you can always call me. Um, my, my work cell is 973-210. That's right. Holla, 4952. Mm -hmm. You can also email me. It's Kerry, K-E-R-R-Y, at kerrybarrettconsulting.com. My website right now is under construction, but there are some videos there and some additional contact information should be ready to go live very soon. So my website, I'll give that to you, kerrybarrettconsulting.com. Thank you everybody for watching another episode of My LinkedIn Friends, and we will see you guys soon.